Next up in the workshop, Dungeons and Doggies from Steam Forge Games. Let's get into it. Hi guys, welcome back to Paint Slinger. Today we are going to try and finish off one of our Dungeons and Doggies that we have going on here. We have the beautiful St. Bernard and uh, so far I think he or she, doesn't matter, is looking pretty darn good. So today we're going to try and get just a little bit more of the details. We've got most of the rough stuff already blocked in. We've got a lot of the the color blocked in so we're just going to try and um, just kind of clean things up and uh, go from there see if we can't get if we can't quite get her 100% finished I've decided it's a she we can't we can't quite get her you know 100% finished today uh, that's okay almost time for some new brushes so basically what I'm doing right now is I'm actually just going through and cleaning up some of the spots where I overpainted. Because you know, that's what you need to do. You put on colors, you overpaint those colors, and then uh, go back and you tidy it up. And then it looks so much better. So if you remember, uh, we put a green green trim on our multicolored cloak. So I'm taking the same green, which is the Caliban green, and I'm uh, just kind of tidying it up. You know. Making things look all nice and pretty. And at the same time, it's also, you know, it'll help define some of the colors that it ran. You got away on you. Hey, look at that. You guys can. No, it's still far away. But you can kind of see what, what you know, what's going on. I'm not holding it up out of frame up here, which I'm up to do. But that's okay. This is a learning process. And what I've learned is, oh, what I've learned so far, I should say, is uh, I make mistakes. So, you know. Now we have a lot of little things that we have to pick out here. We still have a lot of different... Uh, Well, just little details and haven't quite figured out what we're going to do with them yet. So. But that's okay. Because <coughs> the, fun, the fun thing about these things is that they can be as quick as you want or they can be as long as you want. So even though we've spent just about, what, four hours? No, two hours. Two hours, I should say. Two hours. Painting, uh, 
feeding this little doggy. Uh, I don't feel like uh, she's anywhere near ready because I have a lot of little detail to pick out yet. You know, I have the I have the back uh, not the backpack, but I have the bed roll to do. I have the little you know, I have like the little flasks here to do. Let's try and get. See if I can do this. There we go. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah. But I have like the little flasks here to do. I have the uh, the bed roll up here to do. Uh, and then on the other side. Can you get some focus there, camera? Focus the camera. No, it's not bad. You know, I have more flasks here, here. Like I said, the bed will appear, but there's also like little test tube looking things on this. Oh, sorry. There. And on the other side that we have to take care of. So, I mean, we got, we got a little while. They shouldn't take long but again it depends on how you want them to look yeah. and one of the uh, one of the things that I actually haven't tried uh, actually doing flasks and so on to make it look like they're actually filled with liquid and even so what color would those liquids be I don't know but we're gonna try <coughs> we're gonna see how we do Now, if anybody out there has suggestions or tips, hey, the paint slinger is always learning, always looking to learn something new. So, just because I don't know how to do it here and I can't show you guys how to do it there, doesn't mean that somebody knows the tips, somebody knows the trick. Uh, feel free to let me know. Because uh, I want to learn. So I can make my miniatures look even better than how they look right now. That might be too green. Well, maybe not. can't really see it too much because my camera is deciding not to focus today as it you know has a tendency to do but that's okay you know we're just gonna leave those things for now we're gonna go on we're gonna do the bed roll <coughs> what color do you think we should do this bed roll What do you think would be a good color? Hmm. You know what? I kind of like the blue. Let's kind of go with the blue. Oh, let's try something just a little different. Yeah, let's try. 
try something fun. Because painting is all about experimenting and figuring out fun stuff and maybe using a combination of different uh, different techniques. So what we're going to do, just for fun season, is we're going to give this bedroll a coat of the, of the GW's new uh, wraith bone. And then we're going to try one of these new contrast paints. No, yeah, just for fun. And if we don't like it, if I decide that it's just not quite what I'm looking for, guess what? I can paint over it. I'm kind of hoping... And not only will it make it, you know, kind of fun, a little bit interesting, it'll make it fast. So I'm trying to be neat, of course, you know, to not. Get the wraith bone any place I don't want it. But, uh, you know. But if I do, I'll just go back and tidy it up. No big deal. Yeah, these new contrast paints, I'm still playing with them, still learning how to use them. So, let's put the puppy right there for a second. Now, you know, in my travels and stuff like that, I've seen people do some amazing things with these new, uh, with these new contrast paints. And uh, I've been absolutely amazed at what they've been able to do. It's uh, been quite fantastic. Okay, so we'll give that just a little bit a little bit to dry. Put put a decent put a, I put a, I put a decent amount on it. But, you know, it's enough to get me where I should be, hopefully. You know what I just realized? I didn't do the back of the bracers on this pooch, so we have to fix that. It's not right here, it's on my wall. And my station is getting all kinds of mixed up and messed up again. So, while we're waiting for one part to dry, and it doesn't actually take too terribly long for it to dry, we're going to go on and we're going to do another spot. Spots that we've forgotten. Spots we didn't realize we had forgotten. And again, all it does is just help tidy up your miniature. Uh, 
helps it make helps it make it look more finished. Apparently I didn't finish her paws either, so uh, we'll have to go back and fix that too. <clears throat> quite nice on uh, on on her I'm really impressed I'm really happy with how how it's uh, how the old pups is coming out like I said there's uh, in the set, there are six pups that you can that you can choose from that you can do, and I just thought for for ease of videoing because because she's so big that I would do the ah. Uh, the St. Bernard, but I mean, they're not, uh, let's see. they have a Chihuahua, a Chihuahua Rogue, oh, you almost made me happy, Hammer. Like all chihuahuas, it's tiny. As you can kind of see by the size of my fingers compared to the miniature. Now I haven't started anybody else out of the set yet, but I'll get there. You know. I also have a dash hound, and it's cute as all heck. But again, it's really small. But we'll get there. I'll have this set finished sometime. Eventually, one day. But right now, I'm just really enjoying the uh, the big old Bernard. Okay. What do you guys think? Uh, no, I don't want that one. There's not a contrast. Uh, should we make it a yellow color? Make it gold? No. Let's make it a gray. We're going to use the silicone gray. Shake your paint. Shake your paint is what you do. You shake your paint. Now contrasts are a little bit different of an animal and we did kind of go over it. Yeah. You make your you make your little puddle on your palette. And you don't necessarily add anything to it. And then you literally just brush it on and work it through. It 
should settle itself to the deep recesses of wherever it is that you're painting. And it'll help you bring out all your detail. And it should look pretty amazing. There we go. So you can kind of see that uh, the contrast paint right on there. Done. And then you just let it dry. Contrast paints take a little bit longer to dry because it's kind of a halfway between a, uh, a shade and a regular paint. So you just give it a little bit of time. To dry out. And you know what? I actually really like the way that looks. Hmm. It's a nice combination. I could use this contrast paints. Oh, you know what? I forgot the stoppers on the uh, on the tops of the specimen bottle, or the not the specimen bottles, but the like the test tube things that uh, she has here so let's go back and paint those real quick while they are waiting for some of the other stuff to dry up Give another coat on some of the other stoppers just to make sure that they are fully done and taken care of. There we are. Now, if we want, we can actually go back and start tidying up and fixing out the. Uh, um, not really a horse blanket, but same general idea we can start fixing those up because maybe the yellow doesn't quite have the same have the punch that you're looking for so, another thin coat should do it and this way you can also start tidying up the squares we may have done a little bit of overpainting too. Because that happens. Overpainting is a thing. You can be as neat and fastidious as you want, but it just might happen to you. And if it does, don't sweat it. Go back and fix it later.
and if there's spots you know that you haven't actually painted yet and then don't worry about over painting because you'll go back and paint them and you'll fix it at the same time actually I'm going to switch brushes thinking that a slightly finer tip is going to help me get into some of those crevices without bothering too much the paint job that I've already got in other places and oh look at that I was right There we are. It's looking so much better. So all I'm doing right now is I'm just going through the, the blanket and I'm fixing up some of the colors. You know, to make it look nice. And there's colors that I have that are, you know, or there's not colors, there's details that I haven't painted yet because I've been working on other parts. And I'll go back and I'll finish those up. And that's okay. Like I said, it all depends on how detail oriented you want to get with your miniatures and how and how much how much you want to put into them. And you could just slap a coat of paint on it, whatever that coat may be. And call her done. that's what you choose that's what you choose if you want to be super meticulous and do low lights and highlights and in between lights and washes and make every piece almost you know like a masterpiece well, that's okay too. Every miniature is is personal. Maybe this, maybe you know, maybe this particular miniature, whatever it may be, you're like, eh, I'm just gonna give it give it a couple of different colors and call it done. And then maybe this miniature again whichever it may be you're like you know what I'm gonna take a lot of time and I'm gonna do this one up real nice and pretty because uh, because well I want to and I think this will look nice as a centerpiece or I don't actually play this particular game but the miniature was just too nice to pass up and I just want to paint it because I just want to paint it Like I personally, I know it's kind of redundant, but I don't play Dungeons and Dragons, but Dungeons and Doggies, <laughs> oh, I had to get in on that because it looked like 
It looked like a riot. It looked like a lot of fun. And, you know, doggies. Now, for those of us, like myself, who are not necessarily the biggest dog lovers in the world. No, don't get me wrong. I like dogs. But I like cats better. Uh, SFG actually did put out Cats and Catacombs, which is a, uh, well, basically a cat version of this. And I would love to get my hands on, on a set of those. Because as much as I'm enjoying doing this, I think the cats would be absolutely a riot. I think they'd be so much fun to do. But anyway, that's all the time we have today in the in the Paint Slingers workshop. So I want everybody to paint safe and have a great day. Until next time, we will see you later.